Welcome to ECE320 Electronics 1, lecture number 11, Transistors. Now we've been looking at so far are diodes. Diodes are PN junctions. If you have a three junction device, NPN or PNP, that's a transistor. Now transistors are similar to diodes in that they're made up of N-type and P-type silicon. They differ in that you now have three terminals, like I mentioned before, NPN or PNP. They can now operate in three states, off, active, and saturated. They can be used as a switch to turn a device on and off electronically. That's what we do in 320 or digital electronics. They can also be used as an amplifier. Um, that's what we cover in ECE 321 analog electronics. Now for transistor operation, it kind of works like this. We'll just consider NPN devices. P and P are similar, but most of the devices we use in 320 are NPNs. Now, going from collector to emitter, somewhere in here there's a reverse bias diode. That NP junction stops current flow. So normally there's no current flow collector to emitter. The base to emitter is a PN junction. That's a diode. If I apply current base to emitter, I'll have holes flowing with the P type material to the N type material. Uh, for every hole, there's an electron that flows N to P. For a transistor, the base is really, really thin. So what happens is the electrons going into the base shoot right through and wind up at the collector. The electrons on the collector side are majority carriers and they flow freely. So what you wind up with is, is a current control current device. For every um, hole that I um, provide base to emitter, I get an electron. Moreover, I can get current amplification. If I make the doping in the emitter 100 times the doping in the base, I'll have 100 electrons for every hole. That gives you a current gain, so that the current over here is a current gain HFE or beta times the base current. Put that together, and here's the symbol for a, a transistor. It's an NPN device. Base to emitter is a PN junction. That's denoted by this arrow. That arrow denotes diode. This diode is all important. The current base to emitter controls the current collector to emitter. And actually what we did before is for every hole flowing base to emitter, I have an electron flowing emitter to collector. But electrons are negative charged, which means that the current goes collector to emitter. The current base to emitter is in the same direction as collector to emitter. Moreover, the current collector to emitter is a gain times the base to emitter. This is what a what the VI characteristics look like for a transistor. I've got three terminals, so it's a little bit more complicated graph. Uh, right here is the active region. As the base current changes, the collector current changes. And it's a current control current device. This is the active region. The base to emitter is a diode. If there is no current base to emitter, there is no current collector to emitter, because you have a reverse biased PN junction somewhere. So those are two of the states. Off region, if there's no base current, there's no collector current. Active region, the collector current is a gain times the base current. And then there's this third region over here, the saturated region. If there just isn't enough voltage collector to emitter to maintain the current, I basically saturate. And the exact voltage is you know, varies a lot. What we kind of do is just say this is roughly 0.2 volts. Saying the collector to emitter voltage it tries to go to zero. You can't quite actually get to zero, so we'll just call it something like 0.2. That's the three regions. In the active region, you can find the gain. It's just the ratio. When the base current is 1 milliamp, the collector current is 100 milliamps. That's 100 to 1. So the, the current gain beta is 100. Uh, some textbooks use HFE, some use beta. Uh, the one I'm using uses beta. And that's uh, true everywhere. When the base current is 1.4 milliamps, I have 100 times that for the collector. When it's 0.4 milliamps, it's 100 times that. So here the current gain is beta. That's set by the doping in the base and emitter region. Now, a diode has two states, on and off. A transistor has three states. The models for the transistor, in the off state, there's no current flow. So that model's pretty simple, just an open circuit. In the active state, that's where the collector current is a gain times the base current. Base to emitter is a diode. Collector to emitter is a current control current source. The current is beta IB. Whatever the current is through the diode gets amplified by beta. 
in the saturated state, if I just run out of current, I'll then try to make the collector emitter voltage go to zero. It can't quite get to zero, so we just assume something like 0.2. There are also PNP transistors. We'll cover those just briefly. Those are used in H bridges, uh, but normally we'll just use NPNs. The PNP transistor has the arrow going emitter to base. So this is a P, and there's your PN junction, another P. That arrow means diode. Again, the diode is all important. The current emitter to base is amplified by beta IB, emitter to collector, in the same direction as the arrow. Uh, plus, if I try to have too much current and I can't get any more current, I just saturate, and the voltage goes down to 0.2. And okay, what this kind of comes from is the way transistors work is they dump voltage. I can dump anywhere between zero and your power supply and voltage. I can't go below zero. I can't quite get to zero. So the best I can do for current is when I try to get to zero or clip a little bit short of zero at 0.2 volts. That's the saturated state. That we'll look at in just a sec. For the specs for transistor, in this class we really use just two transistors. Uh, DigiKey sells over 60,000 transistors. We can't keep 60,000 in stock, so we just pick two. The 3904s are the one our tech Jeff really prefers that we use. They're three cents each. A uh, little bit bigger ones are the TIP transistors. They're 59 cents each. The 3904s are really designed for digital circuits on off uh, switches. This is really designed for analog electronics, and you can tell because that has a big heat sink on it. In the active region, the transistor dissipates heat. And if you look up in lab, there are a bunch of burn marks on the breadboards. That's from the transistor operating in the active region, getting hot and melting the breadboard. This one has a heat sink, so it can dissipate the heat. 3904 is just too small, there is no heat sink. It's really not designed to operate in the active region. This is really more for 320 digital electronics. But they both work for digital electronics. This will work for analog as long as you keep the current small. The limitations, the current gain on the 3904 is 100 to 300. We tend to use worst case analysis, so the current gain is at least 100. The TIP transistor, the current gain is 1000. The max current is 200 milliamps and 4 amps. Uh, when you saturate, that's when I try to turn it on as a switch. The 3904 can't quite get to zero. It can get down to about 0.2 volts. The TIPs can get down to about 0.9 volts. To see how the different states work, there's a thing called load lines. We do a lot of load lines in this class. If we look at the transistor right here for this circuit, the open circuit voltage when the current is zero is 12 volts. That's this point on the load line. If I short VCE, make it zero volts, that puts me on the y-axis. The current I get is 12 volts of red ohms, 120 milliamps. As VCE varies, I can operate anywhere in this load line. And that's really how transistors operate. They dump voltage. I can dump anywhere between 12 volts and zero volts. I can't go negative because if it did go negative, this would produce energy. I can't even quite get to zero. If I try to go to zero, this will saturate at 0.2 volts. The off state is when the current is zero, and that's where I'm operating right here. Current is zero, the voltage is 12. And notice in the off state, volts times amps is power. The power is zero, so the transistor doesn't have to worry about dissipating heat. That shows up in circuit lab. If I take the input right here and make it a sine wave, when it goes positive, if it goes above 0.7 volts, the diode turns on and the transistor turns on. When it goes below 0.7, everyone's turned off and VC is 12 volts. That shows up right here. If I have a sine wave coming in, when this gets above 0.7 volts, the transistor turns on, I get current flow, and the voltage dips below 12. So here, this is the off state and active region. Um, this is also where you get clipping. If I try to go above 12 volts for sine wave, I can't go above the power supply. And the active region, I apply a little bit of a DC bias on the current. And then what happens is I get, as I get more and more current, the current I'm commanding is beta IB. If that's between zero and 120 milliamps, the transistor limits the current. And it wind up operating right there on the load line, say at 65 milliamps. If I were to take the input as the same sine wave and add a DC offset, that'll raise the DC current. 
That'll put you in the active region. Now I separate the voltage plus minus. I'll get a change in current that's amplified by beta and gets converted to voltage through the 100 ohm resistor. And that's what happens here. If I take the input, the blue line, and bias it so it's up to about 3.3 3 volts on average, the output is now a sine wave. That's what we do in 321 analog electronics. Sine wave in gives you sine wave out. The third state is saturated. If I raise the voltage at the input high enough, what happens is I go along the load line, I get less and less voltage, less and less voltage, then I try to go negative. I cannot go negative because then I produce energy, and a piece of silicon can't do that. I can't even quite get to zero, so I clip at about 0.2 volts. That's what happens when you saturate. Beta IB is more than IC. I'm commanding more current than I can possibly get. In that case, the transistor saturates and becomes close to zero, about 0.2 volts. That's like a switch being turned on. The, ideally, the voltage drop across the switch will be zero. For transistor, it's not quite zero. It's about 0.2 then the current is limited by the resistor. If I apply a sine wave to the input, have this being the DC level and the voltage goes up and down, when I dip below the 120 milliamps, I enter the active region. Above it, I clip or saturate. And that shows up here in circuit lab. If I take the input voltage and increase the DC offset, the blue line, now the output is saturated at about 0.2 volts. If I drop the voltage enough, I go in the active region, then saturated, active, then saturated. Again, this is clipping. And ECE320, to operate as a switch, I want to operate to either the off state or saturated state. In either state, the power dissipated is about zero. Again, power is volts times amps. If the current is zero, the power is zero. If the volts is zero, the power is zero. Um, it's only when you get to 321 analog electronics that you operate in this region. If you ever operate over here in digital electronics, you probably did something wrong. One annoying thing about transistors, with diodes, if I have n diodes in a circuit, I've got two to the n permutations that I have to consider. One of those is correct. If I have a transistor, if the circuit has n transistors, there are three to the n permutations. And the each transistor could be either off, active, or saturated. This is where it really helps to know what the answer is to find the answer. One of those permutations is correct. If you build the circuit, it'll do something. Uh, the check, the trick is trying to figure out which one it is. One kind of way to guess, if you're in ECE320 digital electronics, probably the transistors are off or on. That's where we use them as a switch. It's either you know binary, on or off. In 321 analog electronics, usually the transistors in the active region, that's where if the input is a sine wave, I want the output to be a sine wave. Um, but that's not always the case, but usually that is. So that's kind of some basic background, what a transistor is. In the following lectures, we'll use transistors as a switch and a buffer to take something wimpy, like a signal generator, and have it uh, powerful enough to drive a motor, LED light, and other devices. So that's lecture number 11, Transistors for ECE320 Electronics.